All right, this is the fourth video for September where we're talking all about books. Uh, in my previous videos, I talked about why reading is important, different kinds of reading, and then why focusing on what you're reading is important. So this last video for week four, I'm just gonna talk about um, a few things that you can focus on because when you're homeschooling, it's really great when you can find some extra bang for your buck um, or some things that can kind of do double duty so you don't have to spend all day doing school. Um, and whenever you're reading, you can always make it informational and fun and educational all at the same time. So I like to use books to teach skills. Uh, there's a lot of different graphic organizers that you can grab online. You can go on Teachers Pay Teachers. You can make your own. Um, sometimes I even have put post-its um, throughout the book. So when I was teaching in the classroom, um, reading beforehand and writing specific questions that I want to ask at specific places in, in the book uh, just helped to kind of keep me on task of what I was focusing on, whatever skill I was working on, that was what I was asking throughout the book. Um, you could have your kids go through and mark certain things, certain places within the book with a post-it. Uh, you could really go all out and do different color post-its for different things depending on the age of your kids, but there's lots of things that you can do just when you're reading the book to make it extra educational. Just reading a book is educational, but you can always kind of up the ante a little bit. So one easy one that I thought of right away was main idea and summarizing. Again, you could have them use post-its and mark like the main parts in the book and then kind of go back and summarize. A lot of people struggle with summarizing and pulling out all the main points. So this would be something that would be another life skill that's great for them to have. Another one, depending on the book, some books um, lend themselves to this really easily and others not so much, is cause and effect. Um, you can talk about cause and effect and then you can talk about the examples that you see in the story. Um, it's very easy to do on some books. Another one for just about every book is author's purpose. So we would use the acronym of PI Every author writes a book for one of three reasons. They either want to persuade, inform, or entertain. So persuading you is gonna have kind of like an agenda or a bias to it. Um, usually you can find this very easily in news articles. Um, they're usually one-sided and they're um, displaying facts and statistics or whatever that will back up their claim or their cause or their whatever their opinion is. Um, informational would be any kind of book that is just giving information. So your biographies, your um, nonfiction books that are talking about like animals or historical um, nonfiction. Any of that would be to inform. And then entertaining would just be like your little picture books that you're reading where it's just a, a magical story or just a little pretend story of a mouse who moves across town or something. So those are the three different author's purposes, the reason why they wrote the book. And sometimes it's fun to read a few different books from the same purpose and kind of talk about that again, depending on how old your kids are, um, what trying to predict what the author's purpose was, why, what were they trying to persuade you here? Or why do you think this is to entertain or whatever. So author's purpose is really easy to do on any book. Uh, sequencing is easier to do in some books than others. You can um, write out the events of the book on like post-it card, uh, post-its or index cards. You can put little post-its with numbers on them um, and have your kids put the, put the events in order. You're just, sequencing is just teaching them that one thing comes before the other in a logical way. So you could, um, a really silly way to teach sequencing is to have them write out uh, directions to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and tell them that you have to um, pretend that I don't know how to make it, I've never made one before, and then you follow their directions to a T um, to make their peanut butter and jelly and it's usually hysterical. But it does teach them a little bit of the sequencing, like what needs to come first and the next and last. So sequencing is easier to do in some books than others, uh, definitely not all books. And then, especially if you're reading um, different books, you can do compare and contrast. Of course, there's the Venn diagram, that's the 
mother of all the graphic organizers and you can compare and contrast um, different books. You can get lots of books from the same author and compare and contrast them. Uh, maybe you can pick up on certain styles. I know there's certain um, illustrators that I can definitely pick out their uh, style. So I see a picture of the book and I know that the illustrator, I know who the illustrator is. Eric Carl is the one that comes to mind. Um, Patricia Polacco, sometimes I can pick her out too. So just knowing uh, certain things about what authors like to do or how they like to write, it's kind of interesting when you read um, different books from the same author. And then the last one I wanna talk about is predictions and inferences. So making predictions is just guessing the future and then inferencing is making a guess based on what you already know and what's in the text. So they kind of um, are used interchangeably, but they're not exactly the same. Predictions are just kind of looking through the book and saying, what do you think this story is going to be about? Look at the cover. What do you, what can you tell me about the story? Um, we're inferencing you're doing a little bit more thought and, oh, there's some storm clouds on this page. What do you think is going to happen on the next page? And then kind of going from there. So I hope that gives you some value, maybe some ideas that you can slip in while you're reading to your kids. If you've ever used a book to teach a skill, drop the book and the skill in the comments and we can learn from each other. I hope this month's videos have given you some value and encouraged you to read more to your kids.